Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm gonna do a chatty get ready with me. I feel like it's been, like, I could go back to my channel and look, but I feel like it's been a long time since I've done, like, a full, just get ready with me. I've got a bunch of new products that I've been trying out. I've got a couple of products that I got in PR that I just want to show you guys and just play with and give you kind of my thoughts on those. Um, and then I just, just kind of want to talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is a Saturday morning. I've got my coffee. I'm nice and cozy. I've got a candle going. It's my one concession. I don't believe, so for me, Halloween lasts until Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving is when you can start doing Christmassy kind of crap, okay? <laughs> that's just how I think. Um, the one concession I will give is uh, there's this candle that smells like basalm, which is basically like evergreen or pine or whatever. It smells like Christmas tree. And it's like a fresh, earthy kind of smell. And it's perfect up here in like this attic where it's just like all wood. That's the one concession. I have that candle going right now. And so I smell that. But other than that, it is Halloween until Thanksgiving. So needless to say, this is going to be a longer video, though I think I've been doing a few longer videos recently. So you're going to probably want to save this for when you can sit down, have a snack, or even listen in the background. I love listening to try to get ready with me as, like, as podcasts whenever I'm walking around and doing some stuff. So get comfy or get cozy or both if you're wild and crazy like that and let's get started so part of this i also wanted to show my current foundation like routine for right now because i've been getting a lot of comments you guys are so sweet i've been getting a lot of comments about how great like my skin has been looking and how my foundation has been looking um this is my current skin right now i got some redness up here and i've been breaking out just a little bit down here but overall my skin's been doing really well which is kind of shocking because i've been shaking up my routine and trying out new products so like today for the first time i actually used vitamin c serum or a light oil from the ordinary first time I've used that I'm still gonna keep testing that out and see how it works but I picked that up because my favorite vitamin C serum I've been getting at CVS and stuff I just can't find it. it's like sold out everywhere so I picked up a few bottles from the ordinary we're gonna see how that goes first I want to go in with primer so this is a primer I picked up a while ago and I just kept forgetting I had I don't like how big the packaging is it doesn't fit in any of like my acrylic drawers so I kept forgetting because I like to stick to my everyday makeup basket so it didn't fit in there and I kept forgetting and I was only using the primers in there. So I had to like stick this in the middle of my vanity and be like, use it. And I'm glad I did because I actually really like it. And this is the NYX Bear With Me Hydrating Jelly Primer. Yeah. Jelly. Jelly, 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 jelly. Yeah, it's wiggly. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's like the strangest thing, but it feels really nice. It's really smoothing and it just it works really well underneath my foundations recently And I just like applying it with a brush. This is the Selfie ready foundation brush just from elf I just dip in a few times just boop 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 and Rub it in the one thing I have to do with this is that since it is kind of like a jelly, I need to make sure it sinks into my skin for a little bit before I go in with foundation and concealer. Then we're just gonna let it sit while I pick out what we're gonna be doing for foundation and concealer and powder. Okay, so we let that sit for a little bit. I wanna go in today with the e.l.f. Acne Fighting Foundation. I picked this up in my last Shop My Stash because I haven't used it in a while. I remember really liking it. This is, unfortunately though, like way too dark for me. This is the shade Buff. There are a few great products from e.l.f., but I find that their shade ranges are like sorely lacking. I hope they work on that. So I'm just gonna squirt about that much, probably a little bit too much, onto my palette. And I'm gonna lighten it just with my favorite white mixer. This is from LA Girl, and it's just their Pro Coverage HD Foundation in white. Two, three, I'm pale as hell, so we're gonna go with like three full pumps in that. Okay, so we mixed that and it looks like it's gonna be light enough now. Hopefully. <laughs> so I like to take just like this concealer brush and just like paint on. Well, it's still a bit dark, but you know what? I'm not really doing much today. We'll work with it. And just paint it on like this. And then I like to go in first with a brush to blend it out and then smoothing it out with a sponge. So the brush I'm gonna be using is from Sigma. This is just my F80 Flat Top Kabuki. Okay, so the sponge that I'm going to talk about today was actually sent to me in PR, and I have two of them, and I'm just going to give you my thoughts on them. I'm not, 
not the biggest fan, but I'm gonna actually show you how they work and give you my thoughts. So these sponges are from InStylish and I got the kind of bundle. This is the Not Basic Beauty Sponge Duo. So you get two sponges. I have one dry and one wet. So this is the brown kind of think like real technique sponge. And then this is the pink and it's kind of huge. The first problem I have of these is that this gets way too big. Like, look how big this is compared to my face. It, it's huge. So I think most likely I would get better use using it dry, but I, I don't really like using sponges dry. According to their website, these two makeup sponges are designed without latex, perfect for applying and blending all formulas. Using micro pore formulation, but this, ergo, this ergonomic sponge ensures impeccable streak-free application with minimum product waste. I already disagree there. This does suck up a lot of product just because of how big and squishy it is. So it does soak up a decent amount of product. No matter the formula, liquid, cream, or powder, you're left with even velvety coverage. So they describe this rose kind of one. Just this big mumbo jumbo. <laughs> Using the slanted edge for controlled stippling, the mini moon edge for targeted coverage, perfect for under the eyes, and the rounded edge for all over buffering. And then this is the macchiato sponge. The flat side allows it to be narrow enough to pat on concealer under the eye. That's different. I'm just, see, whenever I see a sponge like this, I never use this side from under my eye. I always use the pointed side and around the nose easily. Yeah, so that's a description from the website. This, I see it, it's originally $12.99, but they always have this discounted to $9.99, so these sponges are $5 each. Let me just try using this. I wanna show you how I'm trying to use this sponge. So this thing is kind of big, so I have to like, I hold it like this, just because I'm also gonna be using this side, so this side is going to have product on it, so. I'm just going to add a little bit more foundation to a couple areas and start building this up. All right, so there we go. As you can see, the rounded side works decently, even though it is kind of like huge. You'll see how difficult it is when it comes to this side for concealer. So for concealer today, I wanna to use a concealer that I just picked up a few weeks ago but it's been blowing my mind because it's been so good and it's a drugstore concealer. This is from Maybelline. This is the Super Stay. Was that it? Just the Super Stay? Yeah. And this is the Maybelline Super Stay Full Coverage Under Eye Concealer. I have the shade 15, which I don't think that's the lightest shade, but you got like, it's not a doe foot applicator, but it is a little applicator. And I love the packaging because it's a tube that you can actually work and get product out of, not like a little plastic thing. So I really like that. And it really is full coverage. So I probably use too much, but I like covering up my dark circles. So now that we have that applied, I'm gonna show you with the InStylish sponge kind of where I have difficulty. So this is the sponge. I've already got product all over this side. I can't really hold this in a way that allows me to like get into my eye without putting this all over my hand. So I'm probably gonna get foundation into my hand, but then I'm using the smallest side. I'm trying to like squish it to make it even smaller. And it's still like huge. Yeah. And I'm gonna just jump in with, this is my Shop Miss A sponge, the black sponge that I really like. And I'm just gonna do this side real quick. Yeah, see how much easier that was? And the point just lets me get like right up in here like I want to. I'm just gonna smooth out this side. So because of that, I can't recommend this sponge because it's not only is it like five times the cost of my little favorite sponge, it really sucks up a lot of product and I think it's just too big for my face. I don't know, do I have a small face? <laughs> but it's just too big. That being said, this sponge was decent because it does have that pointy end, but again, it's $5 when like my favorite sponge is a dollar. So sorry, but I'm, I'm being honest with you guys, I didn't really like these sponges. To set my under eyes and around my face, I am going to be using this Too Faced Born This Way setting powder and I'm probably gonna make a mess. because that's what I always do. If you haven't noticed, I tend to wear kind of some of the same black shirts whenever I'm doing videos because I always get dressed last. <laughs> like 
the last thing I do before I leave the house, if I'm going to work, if I'm going out, if I'm doing anything, the last thing I do is get dressed. Because <laughs> I don't want to spill anything. I'm a clumsy person. You know, I'm not the best. So I always make sure I get dressed, like, last thing so that nothing messes up my outfit. So this is probably going to get covered in powder. Should I wear a bib? I could do a bib. My nasty makeup towel. I'm going to smooth this out. And this concealer, you really don't have to set it if you don't want to because it does dry down not fully but it does dry down to mostly dry um but I just like setting it and I like how smooth it looks after I set it so I'm just going to smooth that out take my bread thing and go right in Okay, I think most of the danger has passed. We can take this off. <laughs> so what I've gotten into the habit of doing, especially over the summer, but I've carried it into like now for the fall season, and I still like the way it makes my foundation look, is what I'll still take my bread thing and the loose powder that I'm using, I'll take a little bit and just set basically like my T-zone-ish area. I like to set right around here. I like to set my nose. like to set the sides of my nose so I don't really have to like pull this <laughs> and then just do that and then I set just right here in between my eyebrows so I'll just take a little bit and I'm not trying to bake these areas I'm literally just trying to do just like a light setting as opposed to like I'm actually like baking under my eyes oh and look see immediately messy <laughs> So since I have combination skin, I still set the rest of my face. I think as we get into the drier months, I'm going to go back to what I used to do, which is just setting like around here. And then I would leave like down here and up here, like not set, but we're not quite there yet. So I'm going to set the rest of my face with my MAC next to nothing powder. And I just take a big fluffy brush, just like this one. This is the Too Faced, like the perfect powder brush. So I just take this and I don't swirl or do anything. I literally just tap so now that our base is just about done i'm going to take a smaller sigma brush so this is the f10 and then i'm just going to wipe away and i'm actually going to like use gentle wiping motions to just wipe off any excess loose powder that i have so i'm going to go into the nose a little bit up here then <laughs> so here we are pale as hell with a nice blank canvas So I know some people like to set with like setting spray right now But I don't do that just because I don't have time to wait for it to fully dry and before I go into like bronzer contour powder everything So I don't use setting spray until right before I do my eyes I do my eyes last so I always spray everything and let it all set so you see that in a little bit But first I want to go into bronzer contour blush all that good stuff and for that today i want to use this this is the physician's formula ultimate mudu mudu butter collection so like this thing oh it's not playing around it's huge it literally has all the butter highlights all the butter blushes it's got the butter lipsticks too but i don't think i'm going to be using those today all the butter bronzers and then every single butter eyeshadow i don't think i'm going to be using I can use some of the eyeshadows, but I really want to bring in my Sweet Peach palette to do a little bit of a look with that. So first, I'm going to go in with the regular butter bronzer, and I'm just going to use this just on the perimeters of my face. All right, so we've got some color to our face, and what I want to do is I want to take one of the darker bronzers down here and use that as a contour. So I think I'm going to take this one, which is, can I read? I think this is the Sculpting Bronzer. So I'm going to take that one and just take my normal contouring brush and see what we can do with it. Ooh, maybe not as stark as that. Light hand. I'll go in with a light hand. There we go, yeah. Definitely go with a light hand. Super pigmented. 
and then I like whenever I apply um, contour I like to apply it with this brush to make sure I get just kind of where I want it and then I use just this kind of duo fiber like stippling brush to like blend it in so I keep it concentrated just right there and I keep blending Ooh, I like how that looks it's very nice so out of everything that is currently in like this big box I feel like the one thing I can give you the most thorough like full review on are the bronzers I really like that they expanded their shade range and they have all of these shades now because I think they originally only had that one bronzer shade and they expanded they did a light bronzer they have deeper bronzers so I like the shade range for bronzers I think it's really good I love this formula and I love the scent so if you know the original like butter bronzer scent yeah this whole thing smells like butter the butter bronzer kind of scent if you don't like that that might not be for you but i personally really like the scent so that doesn't really bother me but the bronzers i love this formula for bronzer it lasts forever i panned an entire regular butter bronzer and it took me like probably six or seven months of like everyday use to finally pan it it's just such a really good just everyday nice blendable bronzer which is actually what got me to fall in love and try out more products from physicians formula was that bronzer i feel like it's either the bronzer or the eyeliner that gets you in and then like you try some of their other stuff but the bronzer it's a really great product you really can't go wrong um and there should be hopefully a shade for most people in here after bronzer and contour i like to go in with blush so i think i'm going to take this kind of like mauvey blush right up here see if I can make this tiny and just the only downside in here is to having the blushes so small is that my blush brush is big <laughs> and these are not only down here I kind of would have liked it maybe if they had made I don't know I would have liked this to be a bigger panel just so that we could actually have full sizes of the blushes but I'm not really gonna complain too much because you're getting a lot of product in here so I'm gonna get that on my brush and Oh, that's a different shade that I normally would have hooked out, but I like it. Cute. And also, after I go in with blush, I take a bigger dual fiber stippling brush, and I like I just like having everything really blended. So I'll blend that in just a little bit on both sides before we go into highlighter. So we have all the butter highlighters right here. I did pick up a full size of one of these, but I bought it online and it came broken. And I don't think these repress very well, the highlighter formula. The bronzer formula represses very well. I don't know why the highlighter just really didn't work for me, but these all look fine. And I think I'm gonna go with this kind of light pink white kind of shade. And I'll show you everywhere I highlight because I think I, I tend to highlight a lot. Um, but I also know that these are really pigmented and soft. So I'm going to take a little bit and like tap off my brush just like that. And I like to highlight. My Cupid's bow. Right on the tip of the nose. Recently, I've actually got into highlighting like right here on the bridge of my nose. Just gives you a little extra glow. And then I like to highlight down this part of my cheek and then up around my eyebrow. So just like that. Ooh, that's got a really pretty like shift to it. And again, just like I did with the blush, I like to take that same dual fiber stippling brush and make sure the highlight is also blended. I honestly don't think there's anything worse than having like a stripe of highlight that isn't like blended into your face. So I always make sure I have it nice and blended. And a little bit of blending here. And there we go. That's mainly like the main base. And that's kind of what I've been doing fairly recently just to get like a nice solid base. I am going to go do my eyebrows real quick so that we can jump into setting spray. And like a true booty guru, I'll do them off camera. If you want to see me do my eyebrows, I actually show you in depth how I use, how I do them using some Franken shades in my subculture palette in my last pen that palette update. So I'll throw that up in the cards if you want to see me do my brows. But otherwise, I'm going to do them real quick and be right back. Okay, and we are back. I did my eyebrows and I also, just to get out of the way, I primed and set my eyes. I just used the Juvia's Place, boop, boop, ba -doo, the Juvia's Place concealer as my eye primer. I have the shade 22. This did not work well under my eyes or on my face like anywhere else. 
But what I like to do is if I find a concealer that doesn't really work well for me, instead of just decluttering it or throwing it away, I use it as an eye primer because for someone with hooded lids, I need a nice kind of thick primer. I always set it with powder. So I like to try prime or I like to try concealers that don't work well for me just on my eyes. This is actually working really well as an eye primer. I did the same thing with the Tarte Shape Tape. It looked horrible under my eyes and on the rest of my face, but it was a damn good eye primer. So try that out if you haven't, if you have a concealer and you don't want to get rid of it, but it doesn't look good on your eyes, try it as an eye primer. You never know. So I did my brows and I want to go in today mainly with the Sweet Peach palette. I've been working on a palette resurrection with this palette, which looking at my schedule, should be out before this video so if it is i'll throw it up in the cards uh but if it's not i don't know that leads me into actually one of the next things i wanted to talk about uh which was the holiday so the holidays are coming up it's going to be a very busy time for me so i know i'm going to stick to my monday wednesday friday schedule but i've been trying to throw in like recently some more live streams or stuff like that so there might be times where i have to do a quick live stream instead of a full regular kind of recorded and edited video like this one i am traveling for thanksgiving uh, my boyfriend and i were going down to virginia and we're gonna stay there for the whole weekend and then just December is kind of crazy <laughs> thankfully for my work and my job it's a slow time of the year but like for family and for birthdays like my <laughs> almost everyone in my family has a birthday in December it's like me my stepsister my younger brother my boyfriend <laughs> we all have birthdays in December and then there's Christmas and then there's New Year's and that's really the only time where like Alvin and I we have to like split the holidays so we have to figure out if we're going to his family if we're doing this if we're doing that so it's gonna be a very busy time I'm definitely not gonna be able to do uh what's it called vlogmas last year I did my best to post a video every day in December I think except for the first day and it was a lot of work and I don't, I'm definitely not going to be able to do it again this year. Maybe next year, but I know for a fact this year I'm going to be too busy with family things, so I'm not going to have the time to do that, unfortunately. So before we jump into my eyes, I didn't set my face with setting spray yet, because I wanted to show you guys. I like to use at least two setting sprays, which could be a bit excessive. You could just use one and just do two separate spray sessions. That sounds weird. But I like to use MAC Fix Plus first. This is the one from the Boom Boom Bloom collection. And I got it on sale because that whole collection went on sale because it was trash so I take this and just a nice good set now normally you want to keep your face as like motionless as possible so you don't like set your creases or anything <laughs> so after I spray with that I take my fan this is my little Totoro fan and I make sure it's mainly 70 ish percent dry now when that is mostly dry, I go in with my second setting spray, which is from Catrice. Right now I'm using just the regular Prime and Fine Multi-Talent Fixing Spray. Recently I've been using the Dewy Glow, which is actually really nice. I have another bottle, but I wanted to go through this one next. So I take this, give it a good shake, and... And same thing. Okay, so now I hope you can see it on camera, but everything is just melded. It did look a bit powdery before, but now it just looks really nice. And that's basically what I do for my base. And I've been getting a lot of compliments on it out and about in my video. So that's basically everything I do to make sure that my base looks as flawless as I could basically get it. And like, you don't need a fan like this. This is just kind of like a little plastic thing, but it helps, it does. I love that you can see like what kind of tier a YouTuber is on because like the big 100,000 and higher YouTubers have like automatic fans that dry their face. And then I see people below that that have like these kind of fans and like fancier fans. And then like, I mean, even if you like, months ago, a year and a half ago, I was just doing this with my hands, trying to dry it. <laughs> but um, I mean, this, I got this as a gift from like Japan, so it was a bit more expensive, but you can find like these kind of plastic fans at like the dollar store. And it does make a difference. And it definitely helps, especially if you're trying to get this done in like a quick manner. So I would recommend just picking up a little fan like this. I keep it just in my uh, foundation drawer and I have it within arm's reach. It's, it just helps a lot. All right, so for eyeshadow, 
Hmm, I kind of want to go with my favorite neutral look with this palette because I also picked up a new um, eyeliner that I really want to try today. So this is from Fenty and it's the Fly Liner. I know I'm like behind on this, but what I love about the holidays the most are like the little mini kits that you can get. So I got a mini kit with the mini Fly Liner and the mini eye primer from Fenty. And I just picked that up like literally yesterday. And I just, I love minis. Um, when I have a collection this big, minis just make a bit more sense for me. And I just really wanted to try this out and it's been a while and I wanted to try it out when it first came out but I never got around to it. So I want to do like a glam neutral look with this and I think I'm going to wear a red lip. So we're going to see how that turns out. So I basically show you how I do my look that I'm gonna try and do in the palette resurrection for this, so I don't wanna repeat myself too much, but essentially I'm gonna be going in with the main shades of, how am I gonna hold this up? I don't wanna, nah, we'll do it like this. I'm basically gonna go in with Luscious all over my lid with Puree and Summer Yum as the mattes in my crease and transition. I wanna deepen it up a little bit with Caramelized, and then my inner corner highlight, I don't know yet. We'll see, I might go back in with my highlighter because I do love using my highlighter as an inner corner highlight on my eyes. I just think it really ties in the whole look. I like how it looks, so I might do that. But those are the main shades I'm going to be using in this look. And kind of getting that out of the way helps me focus a bit more on what I wanted to talk about next, which was my hair. So I posted a poll recently, both on, um, my YouTube community tab and on my uh, Instagram, just based on uh, curly hair videos. I've been going through this kind of rut recently where I've been trying to learn more. I've been trying to do some more research on curly hair routines, on products specifically to help out with dry scalp and with buildup. And I've just unfortunately been seeing so many bigger, and by bigger I mean like over 100k YouTubers doing such, like, I don't want to be too mean, but I'm going to say it, like trashy, like hidden sponsored videos, or like really misleading titles for videos. Like, I, I hate it when I'm looking for a way to help out with dry scalp, right? And I look that up and I find a video and it's like the best way to treat dry scalp. And that's like the title of the video, right? And then I go in and I click through and the way that she's talking sounds very ad-like. And I'm like, hmm, she didn't mention this was sponsored. I watched the whole video, no word of it being sponsored. And then I go into the description box and at the very bottom of the description box, this video was sponsored by blank. I hate that so much. And I've unfortunately been seeing it with a lot of the bigger natural hair, curly hair, YouTubers I was following and I was trying to get more info from and I was just so disillusioned. I was pissed. And so I've been on a, um, a crusade of sorts to find more smaller YouTubers that focus on curly hair. And I found one, she's such a sweetheart, her name is like the Holistic Enchilada here on YouTube and her videos are great. And I found a couple other people, I'll link them all down below if you guys are interested, that focus on curly hair and are smaller and are honest. <laughs> yeah, they don't hide sponsorships, you know? So I actually like unsubscribed from two of those bigger YouTubers because of this issue and I just couldn't stand having these misleading titles and hidden sponsorships anymore. It was getting ridiculous. So that really got me thinking about my curly hair journey and like hoping to fill like a niche that was needed. Uh, I know there there has to be a lot of smaller curly hair, natural hair YouTubers out there, but like I'm having difficulty finding them just because, you know, it's difficult finding smaller creators as it is. But for such a niche like that, I'm having issues. And by smaller, I'm trying to say like under 100K, under 50K that kind of smaller creator. So I found a few so far, but it's just, it's, it's been difficult for me. So A, if you have any recommendations for smaller YouTubers that focus on any type of curly or natural hair, please let me know down below. I would love to support them and follow them. But B, it got me really, really interested in doing more videos. I'm a smaller YouTube creator and 
it just it made me think that I had like a uh, a duty to bring more to this smaller niche because I am someone who's smaller who is going through this process who's trying out these products and who isn't doing hidden sponsored videos like left and right so I really wanted to do more videos on curly hair so I asked you guys if you wanted to see me post more on this channel for curly hair videos or actually create another like side smaller channel focused specifically on hair and I got a lot of votes and I got a lot of feedback from you guys and overwhelming me you guys asked for just more videos on this channel and I have to say I'm, I am a bit grateful for that I really am grateful that you guys are just interested in kind of whatever I want to put out on this channel and I have so much fun doing it I really love this channel and this little community that we've been able to like create here and while I was willing to think about doing that other channel it would have taken time and uh Right now, I'm gonna be honest, I really don't have the bandwidth to do a whole nother channel like on top of this one. So I'm gonna try and focus on doing some more curly hair videos. Like I mentioned in those polls, I don't wanna do more than like two a month-ish. So it won't be too much of a difference, but I wanna bring more curly videos into the smaller YouTube creator space because I was just so sick and tired of seeing these hidden sponsored videos and it's, it's one thing already because hair products for natural hair, like you've got the Diva Curl, you've got the other expensive brands, and it's pricey. Like the products may work, but they're pricey. And so when I'm looking for like a nice dupe for a product, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't trust someone who has a sponsored video from that brand. Like if I'm going to think about seriously buying a product, I'm going to look at the unsponsored reviews. <laughs> I'm going to look on Influencer. I'm going to look on YouTube for people that aren't sponsored. Because quite honestly, like I think it's stupid that people say that you can be honest in a sponsored review. You can't. You can't. If someone is paying you to talk about their product, it's one thing to be PR. I think I've talked about this before. But I think you can be on you can be um, honest with PR because there is no contract, there is no money exchanging hands. It's just we're sending you this product to talk about on your channel. You can say whatever you want about it. Okay, I accept that. I've done PR on my channel and I've said good things and I've said bad things about PR I've gotten on my channel. When it comes to a sponsorship where a company is paying you money, money is exchanging hands. There is a contract that is signed. Do you really think that that company would pay? for a bad review, for a video talking shit about their product? No, no they would not. And on top of that, I know for a fact that every single sponsored video has to be approved by the brand before it gets posted. So I don't trust sponsored videos when it comes to like seriously considering a product to purchase. I'm just gonna put that out there. I don't know if that's controversial or not, but that's just how I feel. And so I really wanted to find more reviews for curly hair products, dupe videos, hack videos, styling videos that weren't just saturated with hidden sponsorships and just crap. So I know not everyone who follows me on this channel is um, someone who has naturally curly hair, but for those of you that do, I know I've got a list of... Uh, videos in my head that I know I really want to do and I want to focus on. Specifically, I want to dupe my favorite Diva Curl products because I hate the fact that like good products that work for our hair are that much more expensive. It shouldn't be twice the cost of just like regular hair care products you can get just to like take care of our natural curly hair. I think that's kind of bullshit. So I want to do that. I'm working on that video right now. I just saw Sally Beauty apparently just came out with a line of products that is supposed to like dupe the diva curl ones. So let me know down below, do you guys have any specific videos that you wanna see from me? Is there anything that you're curious about? Do you wanna see routines? Do you wanna see wash days? Do you wanna see how I wear my hair for a week? Because I do only wash my hair twice a week and I do make it look cute and presentable for work and whatnot. So let me know whichever you guys are interested in down below. Okay, so my camera cut out, unfortunately. The battery died, how dare you. So all I did was just, I finished my lower lash line using the same two matte shades I did for the rest of my eye. And I'm basically done with the shadow. It's kind of just like a really basic neutral look, but that just looks so good every time. So I'm gonna see, I never really do 
a winged liner with a mirror I have to hold up like this. So we're going to see. Pray for me. <clears throat> so they're not even, but they're not as bad as I thought they would be. <laughs> Ooh, for someone, I haven't done winged liner in so long, and I used to, like, feel naked without a wing on. Like, if you go back to my earlier videos, I'm pretty sure I had a wing in every single one of them. It's because I used to have a wing on every day in real life. <laughs> for, like, years, I think from, like, junior year in college until, like, probably until I left my last job and started my new one. So, like, years. I wore a wing every day and you know what it doesn't look terrible I'm proud of myself I do like the really like small precise line that you can get with the tip of the fly liner but this is my very first time wearing it and applying it so I'll have to let you guys know in another video how it works and how it lasts and everything else all that good stuff mascara time ba -da -da -da. it's time for mascara I should probably uh, this would be a good look to do with uh, falsies but I'm going to a party and there's going to be a decent amount of drinking there and I don't want to risk wearing false falsies to that. Oof. So we're just going to layer on the mascara. Ooh, we looking cute. So to finish this look off, I really wanted to go with a red lip because my favorite kind of holiday glam is a neutral glam eye and a red lip. And a uh, spoiler alert. I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys to do basically my best and worst of black lipsticks video, but for other colors. And I got a request recently for red lipsticks, and I looked through my collection and I realized I think I have enough lipsticks to do a red lipstick video. So I am currently testing all of these lipsticks out, and I'm hoping to have the best and worst of red lipsticks up by Christmas perfect for the holidays and then I'll look into doing some other colors because I've gotten some other requests too and I'm just I'm so happy that you guys like that video because uh, I was really happy with how it turned out so today I want to use the red lipstick from wet and wild this is from the mega last liquid catsuit line and this is the shade missy and fierce so let's put you on Okay, and that about finishes this look. Wait, I take my hair down and do like that narcissistic booty guru montage, right? Okay, that, that's enough narcissism for now. <laughs> all right and i think i finished talking about everything i wanted to except for okay so i did mention earlier in this video like going on to influencer to look at reviews and stuff i am doing my best to get a bit more active on there and do more written reviews because i've gotten to a point where i'm good and comfortable with doing reviews here on my youtube channel but i want to get better at like articulating my reviews in writing so i've been a bit more active on influencer so i'll throw my profile and my username up here if you guys are on there if you want to follow shoot me a dm either on instagram or twitter follow me on there i love to follow you guys back because i'm trying to be more active on influencer as well just to hone my writing review skills so that's it thank you guys so much for sitting through this i'm sure it was long chatty get ready with me for this look let me know down below about the curly hair videos what you guys would be interested in seeing and if you're excited for this best and worst of red lipsticks video that should be coming up just in time for christmas thank you guys so much for watching and i cannot wait to see you in my next video bye